everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is kind of a wild one. We've had a lot of the DIY piercings at home slash tutorials slash things we do not want to ever witness, but we do it pretty much on a weekly basis anyway. This is a whole nother lev of what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Level of insanity. But today is a little different. We thought at home piercings were bad. <sighs> How about this time we look at our at home piercing scar removal tutorial? We're going on a whole nother journey today and we're going to be looking at a DIY. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to do that wobbly voice thing they do because Probably can't edit it, to be honest. And two, it's better when you do it yourself. I may give you a little warning for this one because it is a little bit graphic. If you don't like seeing blood or like flesh, this probably isn't the video for you. So I would recommend you go and watch this one instead. Let's do this. I am terrified. We've got a DIY Munro Librette piercing hole removal. Now, obviously piercing hole removal is a thing, but it should be done by a professional. <gasps> Deep breath, everybody. Prepare yourselves. Cleanse area with iodine and numb with ice. Didn't have access to gloves, so scrubbed my hands thoroughly. I mean, what? Access to gloves. If you're going to do something like this hectic, I think you can access some pretty cheap gloves from literally any supermarket. Not that I re recommend going out and buying some gloves from the supermarket to do procedures like this, but um, you can't be that sting to like not pay for some like $3 gloves. Compared to the actual procedure, I think you're saving quite a lot of money there. Could have just gone and got some gloves. I just find this so crazy that you would even attempt. So like, yep. Yeah as surgeons do, as anyone who uses iodine does, you put it on and then straight after you put that ice on, that kind of defeats the purpose of it because your ice isn't clean. Like you got that out of the ice tray. Wow. Proper procedures will be done with numbing. I'm fairly sure they'll either do like a topical numbing or they'll use like needles to inject it like on the surface. Okay, so she's got, so now she's got a biopsy punch here. Jesus, these are not things to just like play around with at home. Like that is so, oh Jesus. Like those punches are so sharp. Yuck, and she's just like, sorry, but like you don't just touch it. Wet the, ah, get some gloves. This is so terrifying. And your filthy, filthy nails. Does anyone know how much filth is beneath your nails and your nails are like touching this wound? You terrify me, woman. What? This, what? Oh my God, what are you doing? And like, it would be so, it's so unsanitary. You have tweezers. She has t -t tweezers. <laughs> it's so unsanitary already to just, I just wipe my tissue over and over and over and over and over and over it. This is not how a professional would do it. Like they wouldn't need to be wiping it 500,000 times because it's meant to be done quickly and properly, as opposed to let's use the tweezers that I pluck my eyebrows with. Oh my God, this is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Are those scissors? Are those... She's snipping away at her flesh. 
God damn it. This would be, this would be so painful. Um, she numbed it with a piece of ice for like three seconds. Um, you were snipping at your flesh, like piece at a time. This is so disgusting. What, like mentally, this would be excruciating, I feel like. So that's like the piece of scar. Oh, she's like pulling out the, that would be where the like hole is. Oh, God damn it. Wow. Just a nice, uh, <laughs> imagine if it was just like a fishing hook. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> with some of these people who do this stuff at home. Grab the tackle box, slide that fishing hook through the lip. Okay, Steve-o. Just pop, pop that ice on there. Make it feel a little bit better because the ice is literally going to do nothing. Maybe she's just cleaning it up with the ice, it looks like. Wow. I mean, it's a pretty... <sighs> it looked like a pretty smooth-looking job. Like, it doesn't look horrendous, but also, like... I feel like she sat there for probably an hour snipping at her flesh with scissors. And now, like, she's put some medical tape over it or something. Has she stitched it up? The bandage strips is... I can't read that because it takes up the whole screen. She said, I'm in no way professional and I'm in no way suggesting others do it as I did. I worked with what I had at hand and it turned out fine. The equipment was sterilized prior to use. What do you mean by sterilized? Do you own an autoclave? Because something tells me that you do not. And they did not come out of a sterilization pouch. So uh, don't know what we're talking about. Just as you used proper numbing, I'd say you used proper sterilization, meaning let's pop it under some hot water or like dip it in bleach, whatever these people do. And then someone said, just done mine, done mine. Just done mine last night after watching this video. This is the irritating thing with like procedures and stuff that people will put on to the internet. People will say like, I'm in no way professional. Don't follow my advice. Don't follow the extremely detailed and step-by-step -step routine I've just shown you. She may not have explained the steps to the audience, but people are still gonna watch and go, hey, I can do that at home. That's why this stuff just should not be on the internet because professionals should be doing it. Because if this were to go really wrong, man, you could give yourself a terrible, hideous, horrible scar. So like, this is terrifying. So now I thought I would show you like the opposite to this and show you what it looks like to get this professionally done. I definitely think it is something that people can benefit from. Like if you have piercing scars, especially on your face and like your lips, lip piercings are the ones that just like, you will always have a hole there. In other places on your body, the scarring doesn't leave like a hole as such like it more leaves like sort of like a flat scar that you can like gradually get rid of with like oils and taking care of your skin properly lip piercing hole removal is like a big thing because of what they create so this one is done by i'm guessing a plastic surgeon so this shows the proper way to do such a procedure right now we're doing a piercing removal um Ani has this uh large gauge piercing that goes from her outer lip to her inner lip, uh, you, you know, you can call that a fistula. And what we do is we just numb it up and then we're going to cut out the whole thing. All right, so right now we're removing this uh, piercing fistula. Um, the piercing's been there for years and we want it gone, so we use a punch biopsy, which is a circular knife. And we make just a little tiny So it's the same there. that the Pull previous the lady down. did use the biopsy punch, Once but um we, do that, we can grab the little This is the proper way to use the biopsy that's punch. Started, and we throw just a little hook through it. And this is a suture that helps pull tension on it, which makes it much easier to follow the track down. You can just watch him do it with such ease, like everything he's doing. Yeah, and yeah. also, the fishing hook is not so much a fishing so hook here, is it? There's a track that follows down around this. 
Oh, it's usually a little uncomfortable. And look at the patient, proper I'm just, tool I'm he's using to like take away blade. that flesh. <laughs> Down, you can see it kind of starting to come out on its own. You don't want to leave any of the tract in there because you want to make sure you remove it. So all. clean, so like precise. And you stick right to the tract. You don't want to cause any muscle damage. Everything's coming out nicely so far. And this is going to go connect to the. You can see how much the lip is the already lip. swelling. Lip. Wow. There you go. Now we're to the other side because you can see the marker that's coming through from the other side here. So that's the lip now. That's the whole tract. Wow. So we just finish it up. That is amazing. That's it right there. So we took out the whole tract. You can see it. That's where the piercing was. So what our piercing holes look okay. like So to decrease inside. tension on the wound, you want to close it in the same line as the little kind of whiskers that people have or the uh, lip lines. And then you loosen up the skin around it to decrease the tension. You loosen it up on both ah, sides. I was first wondering, first I was like, wouldn't it like all like just form together and like, like be yeah, like no, bulbs and stuff? A little bit above, a little bit below. Okay, and that's it. And then to make sure you don't get any scarring, you have to throw vertical mattress sutures here. It's kind of hard to throw deep stitches into these because it's so small, it's a punch biopsy. That so makes a lot try. of sense because it's obviously like you're removing a scar, you yeah, don't want like a bigger scar. Because like looking at this, you'd be like, wow, that looks like you're just giving yourself an even worse scar. But like if you go to a professional... You got to make sure these are perfect. Yeah, they would do it so, so nicely and it would be so beautiful afterwards. Perfect. When you see the vertical mattress stitch pinches everything up, which makes it heal a lot nicer. And then you see if one's enough or if you need a couple more, but we're pretty much done. Wow. He did that in that literally like just over four minutes. On the inside minutes. of the lip, we'll have the inner part of the fistula, which is right there. And sometimes you can just throw one little Stitch there to get that closed. And that's it. That's so impressive. I thought that would be like a cool comparison to show you what should be done, which was like so seamless, so easy for him because he knows what he's doing and like so quick. Obviously it would have taken like more than five minutes to do that, but the actual procedure of like watching all of that, it was like one take obviously the numbing and everything takes a while at the beginning but like once he started i reckon he's got it done within like 10 minutes like so that is amazing whereas if you were sitting there like cutting at like your own inner flesh and not having any numbing on that that has got to be brutal especially when you're doing something like this where it's like you need like one you need to be wearing gloves and two your tools have to be more than just like whatever is considered sterilized for a at-home job. You know what I mean? Like at home, you seriously can't get stuff as sterile as it needs to be. Imagine getting an infection in that and like it going to your bloodstream. This is not something you do at home. This is so terrifying. I am freaking out for that person. Like sure, things may have gone fine, but like go to someone who knows what they're doing because this is not something to muck around with. I'm super intrigued by this and I think a lot of my viewers will be as well because obviously we love piercings, but sometimes, especially on the lips, those piercing scars like remain holes. They don't just, they're not just scars like a lot of other piercings can be. They're like straight up holes on your face. Even if you're wanting to move to like a different lip piercing and take out one. For instance, if I wanted to take out my Medusa and get like a Munro, it literally would look strange because there would be like a piercing hole in the center of my face, but then I'd have like the actual piercing and like wearing the jewelry 
like to the side. It could just like sort of screw up the look. I think it is really cool that you can remove them, um, but just get it done properly, please guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Let me know if you've ever thought about or had your piercing scars and holes removed. It would be really interesting to know who's done that. Thank you so much and I will be back very soon.